Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Film Seizure. I'm one of the hosts, Jeff Arbuckle. With me, as always, Jason Oliver. Yo, how you doing, man? Doing great. Are you ready for Carousel? Ready. Awesome. We're we're late, but we're going to be. I've been on the run. I was going to say for over a decade, but (laughs) yeah. yeah. Uh, Chuck Moore. (laughs) Yeah. You you going to Carousel tonight? Yeah. I wouldn't. The 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 Sandman's are looking for us. My crystal is blinking. The Sandman's. Now somebody who may be safe. (laughs) Sandman's. Who might be safe? I'm running. You're running. You're running. Yeah. Yeah. So with us again, Travis. Travis, how's it going? Pretty good. Travis, Hi, Travis, this movie, Logan's Run, is one of your favorites. Is this correct? Yes, and I want to throw that out there real quick for any listeners that favorite does not imply that this movie is some masterpiece film <laughs> or the best movie ever made. It's just a favorite, you know. Oh, no, so. shit. I like it. I, got, shit. I watch b- bullshit a lot. I, I watch a lot of bullshit, and some of those are some of my favorite bullshits. I collect bullshits. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of bullshits. I mean, it this is. is a cult classic. It is. I, mean, um, I was born in '91, so whenever I was, yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I didn't get to see. Ooh, or dang, feel. you are running. Damn. I don't, I don't know that that <laughs> this is in the same level for me. But if I had seen this young, I think I'd have like a like a Flash Gordon adoration for it. Maybe not as big because Flash Gordon's like, you know, it's that's in as, my heart. It's, it's not, and it's not quite as epic as no it's not. flash gordon but it's cool it's got a lot of the same feel sure. to it but more subdued yeah well it what it has is it has a lot of stuff to think about yeah you can put your brain to big it. big ideas big ideas now travis you've also recently read the novel that this was based on yes so i'm sure we're going to talk about where the differences um, come we will i'm gonna try my best to remember them the book uh it's a fa- I don't know fast paced adventure. So it's interesting because I saw this movie. Uh, whenever I did, liked it. Could tell from having watched it, like things were missing, some connector points or ideas or whatever. But I still liked the overall package, and it was fun. And then I always wanted a remake. You know, they do the remakes. I'm like, man, Logan's Run would always be a good one. It's not the best movie. They could bring it make it modern and now after reading the book i'm like if they do please follow the book more as you can i know so they have to make their changes Mm -hmm. do whatnot but the book does have some and it clears some things up that are and i guess there's two sequels too to the book right at least that's what wikipedia tells me no this so i had looked i could be wrong on it but there's two writers for logan's run and then one of them did maybe like logan's return and world logan's world and I yeah i think somebody the other guy wanted to do a true sequel to it and maybe died or something mm-hmm. uh-uh. interesting <laughs> and i think they also they've been wanting to do this movie potentially it seems as a remake for some time and it just never has happened and yep. i think someone has also written books related to these possible remake movies i don't know and it's so gotcha it looks like this movie had a big budget for the 70s it did um nine million yeah that's quite a bit for the 70s and a lot of that had to do with george powell uh because he was the guy who made like war of the worlds and he had he had produced some pretty big stuff not Uh, to be mean where did that go in this movie because everyone was wearing (laughs) you know everyone's wearing just like regular garb blue red green and then i'm like, sure a lot of the effects it? are cutting edge Absolutely. for 77 and, the and they set, cost a the lot set, of is it well. the, the yeah. small yeah. P, like the dome i would say miniature probably thing? partially yeah. the miniatures i would say probably a the lot of the, the a lot of the recreation of like the senate and like where box was was probably pretty expensive box, box was yeah. probably, box expensive. probably expensive oh that set was expensive yeah yeah yeah. Um, because I think they said that the guy that they actually hired like a um, <laughs> like a like a Japanese ice carver, ice sculpture artist to make all the stuff in boxes oh, cave. Wow. So yeah, I'm guessing that that place really was probably cold. Yeah, so seven, also eight, like the seven, walrus million. and the penguins and stuff. Yeah, it was were like natural. Yeah, <clears throat> they were actually they kind of look like it. Yeah, yeah. So they were actually like professionally carved and everything. So yeah. And that's fair because I don't know. I mean, everything today is like CGI, which is weird because that's where most of the money goes. It'd be like four hundred million dollar movie, and it's like just to do things digitally. So when you have 
practical effects, I guess. Right. Like, and though, I mean, those are a lot cheaper thing. now than they used yeah. to be. It did win a special Academy Award for its visual effects. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. It had some cool effects. Yeah. It wasn't crap. Yeah. It was good. It was like, and then the thing that for me, I guess, also being coming in from the end is like Star Wars was after that. And Star Wars got all the money and did such a good job with making everything look good. So then you're like, uh, it's lo- like, I don't want to put Logan's run down, but then you're just like, man, I, that's what, I guess what, how you make a sci-fi movie. Well, sci-fi yeah. Fantasy. I mean, <laughs> also like Star Wars ended up costing twice as much, I think. Um, but I mean, that's, I mean, I, I'm not terribly surprised that that costs twice as much, but yeah, I mean, like in, in 76, yeah, this is probably pretty, pretty cutting edge. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it, and it has, I think one of the things that I always remember most about this, cause I saw this movie probably the first time in the eighties. Um, I wouldn't be terribly surprised that my brother's watched it or taped it off of it feels like a movie HBO jim or something your brother jim would like uh probably jim but honestly john and jerry too i think yep. um i think that has come up on our movie nights as a potential watch you know so it's yep. like uh it, it's just yeah i mean it's just one of those things that like i think it i think it has just the right combination of interesting ideas scantily clad women <laughs> and kind of just a throwback to probably something they went to the movie theater and saw sure how did how did you see this movie travis i, I it's interesting that this is one of your favorite movies and you're you're 30 now right yeah um, uh, run run up I run know. run up i just thought about that because like, this would have been I've a movie done. that i would have caught on cable for sure like I, I think it was regularly aired on like tbs or usa in the 80s late 80s early 90s but how did you catch it it probably isn't even that exciting um it was definitely so. My friend um, Tony watches a bunch of movies, and then maybe I think I probably watched it like the first time in middle school, but it was too much for me then. I was like, "Eh, what is this?" And probably senior year, uh, doing some, uh, you know, <laughs> with the friends and having a good time. <laughs> oh, a little bit of, <laughs> 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 and then chilling, and then I watched a movie. Uh, more on that level, I was like, dude, I love this. Like, I don't know what it was back then. Like I said, it was going over my head, but I watched it again. And then, because at that point, too, um, like, I just like the dystopian movie. So, like, In Time was one. I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of. And the Repo Men Equilibrium. And so I watched at some point I, the Logan's Run senior year of high school. Which granddaddied all of that kind yeah, of thing. And yeah. I was like, you know what? This one's the OG. Put respect on it. And I liked it. So, Yeah. I, I, you know, it's one of those movies to where, like, it has that aesthetic of, like, this is what the people in the 70s thought the future would look like. And there's always something really, like, awesome about that. Like, as I say that, I look at my egg chair, you know, and it's like. It's that aesthetic, right? It's that. It, well, it feels very old Epcot. Yeah. 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 Like that. That. Yeah. Like it, Figment is going to show up at any time. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm talking even like pre-Figment. You right. Know, where it was. Yeah. Again, like that 60s aesthetic, but high tech at the same time. So it's yeah, so like it, high tech so it, mod. It, it was constantly dating itself. Yeah. 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 Like even before, <laughs> it, the future was dated before it got there because right. they were they were trying to incorporate today's fashion sensibilities into this vision of the future. Yeah, which is weird because like that's the why f- the book's better too because yeah. you don't get to see the visualization of that kind of stuff. So it's, well, it's more your own your more, own visualization, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so that's why I liked it with the book because you don't you know see the sixty seventy. They talk about. So, I mean, some that's the bad side of the book is it's written older and sci-fi. So, you're just like, what is this? Or what are you trying to tell me? But if you do a good job, um, like with Bradbury's book when I had read Illustrated Man, and he's talking mm-hmm. about science stuff that's still relevant today. In a weird way where I'm like, dude, you, what? This was written in 50? Like, I feel <laughs> yeah. like someone just made a modern story now. But Yeah. Well, stuff yeah, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, you can tell that this movie is a combination of like 2001 
with some of the, like the clean like pristine elements of like the sets and everything but then also everybody's dressed like like gene roddenberry got in there and it's like this is how people are going to dress in the future look at star trek and look at all the they're all color coded they're, they're all... color coded they're that's thin material it's uh guys are wearing things that are very feminine or effeminate i should say um you know there's no outside of man woman like outside of that they could almost interchange clothing and in times it looks like they do <laughs> you know right i mean yeah. and they they make it they make it pretty clear that this future is bisexual too yeah yes it's or fun, uh, sexy having just good time but maybe bisexual is not the right word but well, it's, it's pansexual open, open yeah okay pansexual thank yeah. you fair um yeah it's um yeah and that's one of those kind of weird things about this movie too because like the first thing that you get out of this is okay there are sandman there's the sandman role and then there's everybody else and sometimes there's a plastic surgeon guy yeah and his new faces right yeah but beyond that you don't really get the impression that a whole lot of these people actually have jobs it's like literally a utopia where people they may have some things that they do but they just kind of hang out they go to carousel that's they go they to do. carousel <laughs> and they and they dial up a sex buddy and they go to the mall they get yeah. on the circuit yeah they get on the circuit and go to the they, sex. Do, they do have a lot of sex yeah in this movie yeah yeah there's a whole there's a whole place for sex it kind of gets it, it, it makes me curious about <laughs> and it's some of the management facility some of the details and rules of this world right because are they able to reproduce the normal way because they they don't it's it seems foreign to them the concept of actually giving birth to a child like children just kind of show up in this lab right it seems and, like and that that's they, the renewal process where, yeah. where everyone who goes to carousel is actually replaced by a baby because it's always the same amount of people because they only have limited resources right so right because but, but, because what, at but the are beginning, they but Logan, are they actually sterile like what is all this sex that they have produced well it seems like everything is yeah it just yeah but i mean so you again, can allow them the freedom of because well I would assume the movie does it give a I mean, lot biologically, of detail, yeah. But I assume it's just like a system's in place, the perfect system with that thinker. It's been built, and they're all kind of just like a part of it. They don't know how or why because there's just been generations, but you're just there. You have your fun, so you can have sex for pleasure. But the system's like your DNA is not crossing. That's like not going to form a perfect blah blah. So we have well, to hopefully. make the we have to keep making you guys and replacing and like so. well it seems like it might be like a donor system right like like they take your they just take your dna when you're born because like it my impression is is that when logan six grows up because that's who logan who that's who michael york is seeing at the beginning it's like hey look it's logan six there's a new logan you know right my assumption is he will grow up to look like michael york yeah i, I think that there's probably a cloning aspect which is which is the whole renewal thing. It's like, that's my body. I'm going to be renewed into that. Right? right. At least what they think. Um, but yeah, this movie is, is a little bit tantalizing because there's a lot of big ideas that I want to learn more about. I want to understand more about the rules that kind of govern the the decision making and, and why these people i mean they do feel a little bit like sheep like you were kind of saying like the system the mechanics of this place is just kind of as on autopilot right yeah and there it really is isn't this authority anymore it's like this this group think that has just completely enve enveloped everything about what they do and well, you kind of wonder why, they're, why nobody they're questions there anything because there's nothing wrong with the environment you find out but that right. to me that to me speaks to the idea that this was probably what they needed for a short period of time. Yeah, but, ran, it was a runaway train. But yeah. but now it's become yeah yeah it's become the the thing that they just know. I, it it is it makes me think. Have you ever seen THX like yeah. Lucas's? It makes me think of that. That also I got was some like vibes from that a too. system because like everyone was kind of like you know I'm gonna tell on you a rat. Like everyone was the eyes to keep everyone in check, but there was no like main authority that yeah. needs you to do that you're just in a system where you kept telling on each other yeah. because you thought it would be better for you and stuff and you didn't know why and it's because you just were it's an ingrained authority program. was a computer yeah. it was a machine it was i mean yeah no, that, that, but that's not really authority because no that's it, what i'm saying there was no yeah. real authority like it was a program it was computer. all systemic like, yeah yeah to it but 
Yeah, you were in it. It was all systemic. And, and yeah, exactly. I mean, this is just one component that, that they just blindly trust. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, because, like, on top of that, it's like... Uh, the the movie begins with like a little preamble saying that it's the 23rd century there were horrible wars and now basically you live to the age of 30 and you go to the fiery ritual of carousel to find out if you're renewed and they've never seen anybody get renewed everybody just blows up like a firework right and they're like, oh, and it's like it's like a sporting event to it's them. Spectacle. It's, yeah, it's a, a spectacle, spectacle to them. And so they have to keep kind of like for everybody who like there are the people who think that there's something wrong with that system and they and they try to run. And we meet Logan and his pal uh, who are Sandman. Uh, Sandman. And the not the, scarecrows. Not scared. Not scared. <laughs> right. I, had, I had the wrong movie last. Yeah, that's right. um, but, Honest mistake. <laughs> but yeah, so like they they are they are the the police force essentially, because while technically nothing will happen to you if you don't go to Carousel, you have to police that, or you don't have your system. Right. Um, so then, so in a way, it's. Um, it, it is kind of building up this idea of, well, the vast majority of the people don't run. They just fall in line and, uh, and then they burn up in carousel and everybody's like, oh, okay, well, whatever. But there's an underground group of people and they all wear onks and they believe that this is a bad system and they want to figure out where sanctuary is which sanctuary is another systemic thing yeah. as we find out in the end that's really neat i it, it, it's it, it's kind of this layer of centuries of of misbegotten ideas right well it's ideology it's 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 systematic it's in a way it's like it's a utopian communism but there is a religious belief that's breaking through. Yeah, and it's 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 probably. I mean, it was like a or like a essentially belief. like it was a, you know, a a system to get people out of of what's what's the place where they actually live? What's it called? Oh, Logan's this, Run. Logan's oh, city, Logan's place. The yeah, city, just, yeah. They just call it the city. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, at one point in time, that was a functioning system to get people out who wanted to leave, or at least they thought it was. Uh, and maybe to a certain degree, it, it was even functioning before Box kind of went haywire. Right. Yeah. Because, it's very right, because, 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 because it feels did. to me like there there was another society that was living and thriving, but they started coming up against this, the same problems of lack of resources. And Box was was the one who's collecting the fish and the plankton and the body right. and protein from the sea. For them so right. they could, yeah, so yeah. they could have food. But and then, then, but then that whole thing. That fell apart. apart. Yeah, but but there was still a belief system in the city that that there was an escape, but they just never heard from anyone again, because they all thought that they had gotten out and found a better life in sanctuary. I think that's all really cool stuff. Um, I really like to see this movie remade because I think you could you could really dive into some of that. Yeah. Well, and yeah. So. That's the thing that there is this kind of darker secret beyond the fact that guess what carousel is not what we think it is. Carousel is not what we think what it is, and the thing that we think is better doesn't fucking exist. Right, but the truth is known technically by, or there is a there's not a truth known, but there is something that the computer system knows because it sends Logan out to find the 1056 people that the sandmen have lost. Right, but that's to the- his assumption was that they never lost anybody. Right. So so again there's another another secret being kept from people. Sure. That uh, But it's ble- uh, but it's bleak as hell when we find out that those 1056 people they they, they, didn't make they, it, they didn't make it very far. No, they didn't make it out <laughs> of the box. Yeah, I mean they might have lived for a short time. And maybe even some of them lived a full life. We don't know, but they didn't really they didn't really find a sanctuary. I mean, I At would have to the assume end. the old man's parents did, or they didn't find sanctuary, but but they escaped. 
See, yeah, I I was thinking he his family was never in there, but I, I could I, be I wrong. I could agree. be wrong. Could I be, totally yeah. agree. Uh, could could be wrong. Could be right. I mean, yeah, because that's from the outside. It seemed like yeah. I thought that because I think you know you think about like bunkers and things. I mean, that could have been a society that just that just grew from a very small pool of people that escaped you know nuclear warfare or whatever, and now the world has and some remnants or it went other places. Yeah, I mean, I think t- t- to me it's just a really small pocket. And the yeah, the reason that I think that they were never in there is that the old man did not recognize or understand the the jewels in the their jewels, palms. Right, his parents would have had them. Right. That's Anyone right. who escaped, escaped the city would have had him. It yeah. would have been in his zeitgeist for sure. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Like he wouldn't have necessarily had him because if they had, he would have born. He would have been born outside. outside, right? But his parents would have, unless they tore him out, or unless his parents' parents had him. Right. You it know? depends on how long this has been going on. Right. And it it, it also goes back to your question: Can these people actually reproduce? If they can, right. why aren't they? Yeah inside of the inside the sex chamber <laughs> in, yeah well just inside that dome in general well it's but possible yeah. it, it is possible that while their sex drive has been amped up well elevated because they they don't have any real stress in their life on the other hand their reproductive ability may be dampened by the food they eat I, or that, the water yeah. they consume to me that's the thing oh, remember, got, because you don't see the children in the movie prior to being able to walk like you saw some little kids but there's a system in place that nurses children like right. as an infant right they're in a factory kind stuff, of so yeah. yeah but but the concept of live childbirth is foreign to them so it's yeah. like biologically tubes, what so. does sex do I, I, it feels to me like they're sterile yeah but which, which that doesn't would be, say anything good for when no they that's escape. bleak too yeah yeah i mean yeah. that's what i was wondering about the whole movie like mm-hmm. even if they get out of here and grow old are they able to reproduce die. right the, the civilization will die at least yeah. their civilization if it's this is separate this is a slightly better zardoz i, I was <laughs> actually a it, lot better i was zardoz. comparing it to zardoz as we were watching it and zardoz is a little bit different um because it's it's, a, because it's, it's the outside it's, coming it's, it's in it's the outside coming in it's, it's flipped the, yeah. yeah yeah right yep um yeah, when I say a little bit better, that's, that's a <laughs> wide, wide little bit. Yeah. Zar- Dan, Zardoz is the one that I know, I that, know. That and is, that's bringing it, down the gods. That one, yeah, that one, one st- it sticks with me. It's got meat on it, and uh, it's not a bad movie. And I know, I know, well, you, and I know you, I know you like it. It's okay. I'm gonna put it's, it up there, so I like it. Okay, well, fair enough. I kind of like it. It's bringing I, down the gods, like all the smart, intelligent people with their perfect system, and you thought they could win, and here just comes uh-huh. homie with the guy. <laughs> Tuli Tuli. Well, poo-poo. hey, that's the problem. <laughs> the the problem is they kind of create that problem themselves by saying the gun is good, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. Hmm. I wonder what that sounds like. Hmm, and that's yikes. why with this movie, Logan's Run, I did like it because it's very like they give you enough information, but make it not enough where you could think of things like how long is this man was he a second generation outside right. third where's mm-hmm. his family like how long have these people been in you say there was war outside what was so it's like we get pieces of it they're just like wow this is interesting it gives well, you, you, you know, build room to it, imagine but, yeah for sure yep. yeah kind of all we know own. is outside this bubble technology is probably dead right right but there could be pockets of people everywhere right potentially yes yeah right. and there could be mutants too yeah, because be. assuming <laughs> that there was some sort of a nuclear war, because I'm I'm going I'm gonna just assume that that's what the catastrophe sure. was. You have to assume something uh, fucked up the environment for at least uh, a short bit of time. Exactly, yep. and therefore you could have people who are multi multi generational outside mutant types. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, which may not necessarily be anything scary or monstrous they just are different types of people now i always like that stuff too like and i know i'm getting ahead of it but the overrun washington dc where Mm -hmm. nature is taken back over it's one of my favorite things in the last of us game where nature like invades the the city it's so cool yeah that that was one of the cool things about uh that they really got right with like i am legend oh yeah absolutely Yeah. yeah Because uh, I think at one point, like, isn't there a fucking tiger or something out there? Yep. Yeah. And, well, yeah. That and there's the bear and stuff. And, yeah. And, and twelve monkeys. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's cool stuff. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. so yeah it's it, there's there's an aesthetic to this movie that makes it fun to watch yeah um i mean there's an aesthetic to this movie that i think has inspired a lot of yeah sci-fi. a yeah. lot of sci-fi well and it is very classic sci-fi too and it's it's that sci-fi right before star wars where then everything after that became space opera type stuff yeah whereas um it's very terrestrial sci-fi where you do have overrun cities you do have um completely and totally different type of dress right uh different sensibilities towards um you know sex or or gender roles or whatever um you have well and this is something again bringing up star trek again there's been multiple episodes of that where a computer is running a, a civilization it's right. just it's just simply on autopilot yeah um or the computer has some sort of defense mechanism to police itself well and this is this idea like even though they're humans it is like simulation it is like the matrix like it probably inspired the matrix sure because they are in a program mm-hmm. yeah it's just constant yeah. I don't know what it's using them for. That's the part that's confusing. And what your runaway train like suggestion makes the yeah. most sense. I just why think are they, they still know. in this thing? It's all, well, like, it's all they is, know. What purpose is it? Is it well serving to anybody? Well, the thing it's is, is not, they get right? The, so this movie, there is no sanctuary at the end. But they find out like, hey, the system, we don't have to die. We can actually live right. a life that we want to. But now living a life would imply you have to work the earth again. You're going to have mm-hmm. to hunt. You're going to have to make these clothes. Like in the system, you get everything you want. You get to have sex. You get to have the drugs. You get to go out. You get to do whatever. It's like giving. You're like a baby in a crib. But, but you only you get 30 years. you past that 30 mm-hmm. and out, you gotta. You can't trust the system. And then you're going to have to do everything. And it's going to go back to like right. being well, human. Like they get their humanity and, back. And, right. But I'm just and saying. And it's like if yeah. one person disrupts that, just one you know, it, it it ruins it for everyone else. That's because, why I'm thinking because the a lot system of people doesn't work get out. anymore. That's why I'm thinking nobody ever got out yeah. until Logan does. Yeah, well, I, I, I think so too. It's very possible. I yeah. think so too. I mean, because the other thing was just was just getting frozen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which is and, you're and, not dying, but and, you're and, and honestly, that frozen. could that yeah. could even be. I think your Matrix analogy is a really good one because it, it, that's almost like Neo. Right, sanctuary. Yeah, it's, it's it's the part of the matrix that uh, that allows you to rebel, and it happens every cycle. There's right. a neo, and it's and it's just a thing that has to happen. That whole like act of rebellion, catch and release, or fro- fro- get frozen is all part of the system. Right. Well, it could it also like. It, although I would say that that would be a, a better take though if the computer didn't think that 1,056 people made it out. So I do think that there's like a, a sub layer to to this it lost civilization. Track, it lost, that it track, lost track, track of those of. people when they got to the box, which is right. theoretically just a refrigerator for food. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the thing started killing everyone that came there because yeah. it thought it was food for everybody. Well, right. yeah, it's it had to adjust its own programming. It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> it is yeah, crazy. Actually. It's wild stuff. <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's the idea because it also takes into consideration artificial intelligence because mm-hmm. that's where box had to adjust and think like a person except for it's stunted because it's a program and it's still called them food though it still treated them it didn't treat them as human so it right no better there necessarily well because he was never told who he was saving the food for right he just yeah right <laughs> he was just being told to save food yeah. right but then so he adjusted not realizing that his own creators asked them for and these would be representations of the and apparently the creators lost contact with box so well that's the, so that's the uh, that's the next thing right because i think box has been there for 100 or you know, like probably like 100 years or something like that right now one thing i was thinking it's like okay they had to set up a a, a functioning society with limited resources everybody in a dome and they had to teach these people something they had to teach people less than what is total in the world, right? Like right. they don't know what cats are. They don't know. Um, they didn't even know. They had to remove wonder from their lives, basically. You right? Couldn't wonder. You couldn't. Right. You couldn't be inquisitive. You and they didn't know. I don't even think they knew what fish was. 
Mm-mm. Um, but anyway, they, um, well, now the, the, the thing is though, yeah, they may have taken away wonder, but at the same time that brings back that philosophical question. If everything is offered to you that you, that, that, that satisfy base need, you know, is, is that worth giving up wonder to some people, you know, in a cruel calculation, probably the answer is yes when you're surviving especially if you don't know if you're ignorant of of anything else it's kind of like, like the village that's not a great movie but no, no <laughs> it's not but that, having that evil or something on the periphery to keep you in line right and but, the sandman are kind of that in exactly this, they, they are the extension of the program which was itself an extension of whoever set up the 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 it was society Ron he was, it, was wrong, it, it was wrong. Set it and forget yep. it. Yep. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then it, uh, yeah, because then at that point, those people died off. Yeah. And their next generation had less knowledge. So they died off. And then that next generation had even less knowledge and they died off. Right. And now you are left with the program running it. Mm-hmm. And people have have lost their family tree, I guess. Mm-hmm. Is any of that in the book? So the book, <laughs> wowie. Um, I was reading it like it's a it's fast pace. So I was thinking it was most the same. It kind of is because they take like big themes or whatever, but it's like very different. So the movie's a dome, and in the book, it's the whole world is still being traveled like it's uh they're not contained oh okay. so it's it was w- kind of weird because i didn't know it doesn't say anything about being dome but they uh just go to different locations like he talks about something france and then how some tourists went to some part of california so the world is open it is just this system was different so it's not a computer so in this in the book like towards the end they tell you about the little war and apparently like the population just kept getting younger and there's more and more younger people and in the 60s almost everybody was under 21 and then there's like hunt there's still older people but they're like hey you guys don't know what you're talking about you can't run the system like we're tired of these wars and blah 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 and like we're taking control and then of course if everyone's young and that's what's going to happen they're chasing congressmen out pulling them so they okay boomered everybody yeah Yeah. okay boom for real and then so one guy i think came into (laughs) he was young and like their person like he talked in all these different countries and was just like hey you know, we got to change. This is what we got to do. And like, he was the first person and be like, kill yourself at 21. And then it's like, everyone was like, yeah, that's what you do. And that's the system became everyone against each other. Like they formed the idea. If you're a runner, you're scum. Like people gotcha. are like runner, ew, disgusting. If you runner, just do your duty. Right. Like that's what you do. So gotcha. like everyone Don't was be against a boomer. you being a runner and yeah. getting old. Cause they're like old people. They can't help. Like it's, that's in, that's young, that's so. interesting. Yeah, that's not that's not implied at all in this. No, it's no. not. Well, and then he yeah. isn't put on the run. It is literally, it's just his last day, and he is like, I don't know. So he, Logan, instead of getting the computer to force it, it's his last day, and um, and this one it's twenty one. So instead of thirty, right, it's zero to six, seven to. 13 14 at 21 and then you have your last day and after that you're supposed to go to deep sleep which is just like people know too like you're just dying like you're gonna go in a chamber and deep sleep. so there's no everybody rebirth. yeah there's no rebirth there's no spiritual thing like you're just gonna do your civic duty go deep sleep and be out at 21 like that's just your job yeah that's interesting and then so he has this idea where he because when he it opens with um some runners and he kills Doyle 10 or something um, with Francis and Francis is there but they're not like super buddy buddy it's just like Francis like this veteran like really cold like good operative DS man and so he he finds this one and the dude's dying and he doesn't care about his life or anything he's just like ah something sanctuary and gives him a key and so it's like what he's like oh I could find sanctuary and if I do that I can like bring this whole shit down and even though I'm dying they'll be like you're a hero 
and that will at least go down in history as being the hero who took down Sanctuary and like stopped all the runners from getting away. Huh. And then on his adventure, more things happen and ensue. And he's just like, no, nope, I'm really running now. Like, he learns yeah. humanity. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. That's interesting. And there's well, more locations and like mech eagles and stuff. Like maybe I'll be able to bring it up, but yeah. it, gets, it gets crazy. Huh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, because like. I, you know, I, I, I'm, it's probably not necessary. It's probably very of its time that they picked 30. Prime, well, for two reasons. One, um, actors. you got to get the <laughs> actors that are going to be able to do this. So, yeah. you know, you can't get a bunch of teenagers. But two is that there used to be the old adage of don't trust anybody over 30. You know, like the, the hippies would start to adopt that because the idea was back, you know, back then, once you turn 30, you settle down. You're square. You're, you're square. Mm-hmm. You kind of become conservative, and you know, and you and you become part of the very system that mm-hmm. everybody else kind of fights against. Um, and so, I'm not surprised that the inversion of that is interesting. Yeah, you know, because in this, they want everybody to fall in line. Right. Right. But but again, it's you know a resource issue. Right. But in this, probably 30 is chosen because people who are older will start to think more logically about the mm. system right. and want to destroy start it. start to question things. Well, yeah, yes. you're, you're easier to control when you can just dial up a sex partner anytime you're at home. Right, and once you're 30, you're mature, you can start thinking about, wait, what is really mm-hmm. happening here? Right. And they don't so, want well, anyone to do that. It, they were like, huh, either at 30 we can kill them or all their reproductive parts fall off. <laughs> Which one are we going to do? And everybody's like, kill them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, yeah. But like, I also like the whole idea of like, do your civic duty. It's like, that would have been a hard thing to sell to people in 1970s. I mean, it would be one way you could sell it to the anti-Vietnam crowd. It's kind of hard to sell it to the rest of the, of the country by saying, Hey, you know, be no, a patriot world. and it, right. But I mean, the like world's on board, but like in the movie, it would be, or like for the movie yeah, to sell it to the mainstream, you'd be telling people, it's like, be a patriot and kill yourself at 21, asking everybody over 21 to pay for a movie ticket. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. New movie. This would have like signs up everywhere about, oh, they would, they would, oh yeah, it would be very, uh, there'd be a lot of propaganda in, in it. Oh, probably. Oh yeah. Uh, Paul Verhoeven should do a new movie. Of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there was some more too. So with the uh, in the book too. So there was a bunch of young people, and I know that someone did a war. Kind of called it the Little War. I, I don't think it was like global, but like a whole bunch of like protests were happening in DC, and I think like somebody was like, "Ah, oh, let's shut it down with like some semi-small nuke just for that area." And huh. that was like the only blood that was lost. And then they're like, "Oh, they're sick." And then the dude who had gone and told everybody like, "This is what we have to do," because I think they were gonna imply because of the overpopulation, everybody being young, like you can't like some body control pregnancy birth act con- new constitution thing and all the young kids were like no we could have whoever many kids we want with whoever we want you can't stop us and then it did get weird but it is weird now thinking because if you think of the immaturity of 21 year olds like how that would maintain itself because all these people and actually it makes sense because there's like hip- hypno rooms i think so you would think 21 like no one's gonna be on board with that eventually like society would be like dude i don't want a civic duty anymore like no it would last for about a month there's, but, some, there's some children but the then it is there weird because they yeah. do like their nursery because he does escape to one and there's like an auto mother auto something whatever it's called robot to handles the kids and like they are in classrooms that are just probably hypnotic propaganda like sitting there and so those people might even semi not even really want to do the civic duty, but you know, it's like the indoctrination. Well, there's definitely birth, conditioning like going on. You must kill yourself like every day for like the yeah. first five years. They're all that. conditioned for this. Let's right. do it. Yeah. Yeah. But the big lie for them is that you'll be reborn. Right. Which makes or, sense. Or you may survive carousel, but there it's even said in a couple of instances in the movie, it's like, do you really want to be 31? 
Right. You know, which is even some people realize it's like, oh, I'm fine if I blow up in a sparkly fire. I got the impression that nobody ever survives it. No. They, even they though they don't. say that you They might. say there's a chance, but no, you never do. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. Renewal is a possibility, but it's kind of like a lottery that nobody ever hits. And even Francis, like when asked by logan directly so once logan starts to realize there's something going on he meets are we gonna talk about well, the yeah, movie so, actually? yeah yeah let's so yeah so basically logan and the plot, um, I guess. and francis um they they open up their buddies they're talking about all their douchey stuff that they do and they're really kind of set up as being very privileged yeah in the sense that they are sandmen they they are respected they are well off they're well they seemingly are well taken care of yeah um they they constantly want to uh fuck ladies Mm -hmm. um and or men or men or men or men but you know they definitely are are like hey those girls are checking us out it's like oh yeah i don't know about them what about Mm -hmm. them and stuff like that you know like guys say you know (laughs) i've said that to I've said that in several friend situations. Um, <laughs> I say that all the time. I say that. No, not that one. I, I don't like that one. Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, you can definitely tell that they bro out big time. And they are going to carousel. And that's when we first get to see, it's this whole, it's a very 70s thing where people are wearing weirdo clothing and like masks. And then they're lifted up and they're flying around and then they explode yeah and they get a call that there's a runner in the near vicinity so they're going to go and take care of it and they just straight up gun the guy down basically well they miss him like if well they, they miss him a few they're like stormtroopers and then yeah. he falls off a ledge or they're so right. like maybe they're just playing with him like we're just shooting yeah, around I, you yeah, i'm kind of thinking it's a little <laughs> bit of sport yeah in there too but um but yeah so Not like bad. they 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 are very very um uh, zealous to kill these people yeah but they don't think of it as killing they're just doing their job they're terminating right. runners right. they're terminating runners it's not killing anybody um so because you don't really run until your time is up and that's what the little thing in the palm of your hand that flashes when your time is up so they um they collect all the guys you know belongings so that they can give it to the program as they kind of make their report. And one of the things that, that Logan picked up from the guy was an Ankh, which is the little cross with the circle on top. It's the Egyptian symbol. Right. Um, and when he put it into the system and the system scanned it or whatever, they're like, uh, he sits down for his debriefing and the computer's like, do you recognize this? And he's like, no, I don't know what that is. I mean, you really get the the impression that Logan is not educated much more beyond maybe half his age. Right. Because he is very, very clueless to things. He's just told to do a job and he does it. And he gets to fuck a lady at the end of the <laughs> night. You know, or a guy. <laughs> or a guy. He just didn't feel like a guy that night. You know. But anyway, so the uh, – and this – so when they um, – and I should say – in between the time that they go in for their debriefing and their, ex, you know, they expired the, or they um, retired the runner. Um, you do see, he goes home and he dials up uh, the, his sex wall. And first the woman comes, is like, nah, I don't want her. Then a guy comes, he's like, nah, nah, not in the mood tonight. And then that's when Jessica. we first meet uh, Jenny Agater. Um, and she also is wearing an onk, uh, as kind of part of like a, I don't know, like a collar. Uh, it's very, um, sexy. Yes. Um, <laughs> did you have to question that? No, I was just thinking, is that the right word? Um, and so he's like, all right, well, let's do it. But she is apparently kind of rebellious. She only put herself in the, in whatever they call that circuit circuit to get picked up for sex um because she was sad that one of her friends died at carousel that night and he's very kind of aloof to it all and he's like yeah but that's that's the way it is it's like not dying 
they're being renewed right and she's like yeah you really believe that right and but he's like all right well whatever um take can we have sex on? Yeah, yeah, can we have sex let's now? do this um so his buddy francis comes back with two chicks and he's like well i guess she can leave you know it's like, <laughs> see you later and then he throws a drug bomb at the ceiling yeah yeah, yeah a little pink drug bomb and and the girls are bouncing on the bed and the guys are like yeah <laughs> And then the next morning, they go in for the <laughs> debriefing. So, wait, hold on a second. With um, Jessica, Jessica Six? Jessica Six, yeah. Do she's you, a year older. Do you not think that that was a, a recon mission? To, cause didn't she mention that she wanted to learn more about the Sandman? That she was curious? It's possible. I think it was. I think it was a little bit of a recon mission. It wasn't necessarily reconning him specifically, just any runner, or sorry, any Sandman. To get to understand more about right because she wasn't interested, she wasn't going to have sex. No, which is the whole purpose of the circuit. And she's so already like, and she's already clued into sanctuary and in with those people. So to me, yeah, I felt it felt a little bit more like a curiosity or a recon mission, yeah. possibly. Yeah, um, yeah. So the next the next day, he goes and talks to the to the main head cheese computer, and. Um, the the computers like shows the onk and is like well have you do you know what this is and he's like no not really i mean like he he recognized it on jessica that it was the same thing he took from the guy but that was that was it he just figures it's a fashion thing yeah and they explain it's a, it's an onk um and that an onk was like a religious symbol or whatever Mm. and then he says do you recognize this or they said do you recognize this word and they show sanctuary and then they had to explain what sanctuary was to him he didn't even understand what that he right. has no concept of that word so at this point uh the program is like all right logan here's the deal you're gonna go you were going to um you're gonna run basically and you're gonna find sanctuary and destroy it and he's like um and they're like, put your hand here. And he puts the little jewel in his hand onto the thing. And it basically removes the rest of his time. And four years yeah. left. Yeah. And he's like, and he keeps asking, um, will I get my four years back? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, okay, so you're going to do this. And it's like giving him his orders. Like, but guys, get back, uh, but guys. Get, um, do I get my <laughs> time back? <laughs> so it seems like I'm sure that there is some connective tissue missing here. But like, like you said, Travis, like in the book, it's like he eventually kind of comes to realize that the system is weird. In this, he is intending on following his orders and then, but very quickly realizes something's weird. I, yeah, it, it, it is interesting. I like the idea from the book better that it's his last day and he wants to make it count, but count for the society that he believes in still right because because that, that when you said you, he wanted to like root out sanctuary on his last day and yeah so he didn't even know but when he started hearing about sanctuary he's like i could i could take it down hero, take, yeah like, right I'm still right running and that's bad but once they find out why I'm i think running. that's i think that's so much cooler but yeah yeah so like yeah because uh, his first thing that he realizes is um the first thing he realizes is he's not getting his time back. Like, they're basically <laughs> sacrificing him. Yeah. It's like, and, oh, shit. Yeah. And then he starts to realize, like, no, there's there's really something kind of here. Like, these people are really believing in this. And, by the way, I'm running, but all of my, all of my other uh, guys that, that I work with don't know that I'm running. Right. Like, I could die here. Mm -hmm. and i think all of that starts to pile up to he almost instantly realizes oh i just got fucked by the system yep. yeah well he even turns on his gun like he turns on his gun which i think alerts everyone to where he's at mm -hmm. he intended to bring down the whole system on sanctuary sure when he thought they were going through that door to go into sanctuary yeah right yeah oh yeah for sure oh yeah. yeah he lead i mean he does cause the death of several people yeah <laughs> um one of which is Farrah Fawcett Majors. Oh, poor Farrah oh. Fawcett Majors. Aww. Dark hair. <laughs> dark she hair. just wants a guy with dark hair. Dark hair. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, he, he learns about, like, okay, there is a patch. Uh, there's, like, this kind of patchwork system of people who are trying to help people get out of 
the dome or out of the city. These are probably a, a network of people that have been doing this long enough to where they have helped people get out and then they get trapped by box. Yeah, um, yeah most definitely. So he also finds out that a lot of these people go through, they get a, a, a reface job and they basically go to this place that's called the New You Salon or whatever. Which you wouldn't you think you would outlaw that place if it's populated by runners? Is that a thing in the book? The new face? The new... So, in the book, um, it does exist. He gets there. So, after... I have to remember. Like, in this one, there's more of an established kind of underground. So, like, when he got killed, the runner Doyle, and got the key, that led him to the next contact. Information would be provided and led on your way until finally to Sanctuary. So he went to the new, um, the new you, because even though he's still running for maybe his goal to bring this down, he's still a runner right now. Right. And DS men will kill him and he can't get that goal and he doesn't still want to die. So he's going to go change his face. When he's there, he wasn't supposed to have his gun because only Sandman could have guns. And if like someone touches your gun, apparently, and you're not the person who'll blow up. Like if I'm a Sandman and I drop in, you're like, oh, I'm going to get in, kill, you die. And they have six charges, uh, which they're called like Needler Tangler or something, but the main one's the Homer. So in this one, too, for the book, you want to die at 21 because it's a peaceful death. Maybe you fork, whatever. They have these things called relife where you could like live moments and do whatever, maybe some stuff, and you die peacefully. The Homer is some crazy sci-fi super shot that seeks on a like heat positioning and blows to like every nerve in your body so it's supposed to be like the most painful thing you could experience oh, before dying mm. so that's why it's like you don't want to run because the homer will get you right. so i like that that the reface is almost more underground in the book it sounds like whereas in the movie it feels like it's just next door to where you buy sh new shoes you know well the, the in the movie there is uh and this is one of the themes i was kind of looking at like what are some of the themes that people have talked about with this movie and one of it was the um almost um uh, it, it's kind of a uh oh, what's the word i want to um uh, youth worship you know, where like people are uh, because like the guy who does the reface is 29 to which he looks younger than 29 because even Logan says, Oh, I expected you to look older. He's yeah. like, when's your, when's your, you know, when are you up? And he says next year. And he's like, Oh, Oh, okay. So, but like, it's, it's this kind of, even, even when you have a short lifespan, the idea that I pick up is that it, when you're 27 28 29 you want to start hiding your, it's not fashionable to, to be to old. look like you're almost about to need to right renew, because right? yeah it's like i mean nobody wants to walk like see a fucking walking corpse because you know you've only got like six months left or something right like nobody that. wants to pity fuck the guy either <laughs> right in, in the well, unless you go to that some, room. yeah there's well well, the well yeah unless you go to the sex place yeah. <laughs> yeah i definitely did get a little <laughs> yeah. bit of sense of the youth worship that yeah. make that makes sense so you know so it's fashionable to do that um, and you know, obviously, you know, like fair faucets, like, Oh, I like a guy with dark hair and it's like, so you can kind of just play around with your looks to just attract people. It's kind of also a vanity thing. Well, mm -hmm. it's all a vanity thing if it's youth worship too. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think in the book too, the guy, he was more un like, cause I think there are hospitals. So there aren't like places you go and within the system, you register. It's like getting, you know, tattoos. Okay. Like, so you would go somewhere be like, I want this face. It would go in the system that Logan 3 turned into. Ah, uh, okay. But this guy is just a good surgeon because, I mean, it's a table. It does everything for it. So he was able to get one and he knows how to work it. So he works and it's off the the underground. And it's off the books. Right. And he could change faces for runners to help That's them one thing I think way. this movie struggles with a lot is just the hierarchy of people and why. Yeah. They're there. They're, <laughs> well, yeah, you have that one area where there's a the bunch of kids that a gut or a Jenny, a gutter and Logan run into. And it's like, well, are these runners? 
who are these people? Yeah. Why is the red lady a runner and the rest of these people aren't? Yeah, it's like it's the just kids confusing. are The kids are just the, some punks, you know. Like but then the other people who they go meet through the door, they're not technically runners, but they're not in the system and they're helping the runners. Mm -hmm. And why doesn't anybody know where they're at? Yeah. Like, is this, am I thinking of this well, place it's, as it's much, like is it much bigger than I'm thinking it I is? I think it is. Yeah, because it, it, once they go through the door, because it's, it's, it's in the back of the sex place. Right. So when they go through that door, you're now kind of, it's kind of like if you go to the part of the movie theater behind the screen, there's like that whole backstage area that where I used to, when I was a little kid, think that that's where the actors were. I think they got awesome. mixed up because <laughs> in the book, like the book doesn't establish, like I said, it's pretty awesome. open and it seems like there are platforms like underground, like maze, like there's a maze network under the earth because something did happen up top, but you could still get to location. So like you could be per se, like in Atlanta, like traveling there in that city and then you would get in a little maze car and like in five seconds be in LA and then in that city. But this one, fast. they were trying to just contain it to one dome yeah, one and you don't know dome. how big it is so where the cubs are i think if you're like looking at new york city and if new york city was completely domed like the ones closer to the like part of this would be lame and probably like the ghetto within the dome and that's where the cubs were it's like the part of like don't go to that part of the city like you're gonna get robbed the cubs eventually die. have to come to the bigger part of the no. city they like live in the slums it's like if this is you know so Manhattan. how do they die at 30 then he, no, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what happens. Uh... I get in the book. I guess that makes sense. In the movie, it makes none because well, there's they, a bigger system in the movie. Well, there is a bigger system, but at the same time, Logan doesn't know what happens after thirty. Himself, he just assumes like you're going to die. Not, I'm not talking about Logan though. I'm talking about the Cubs. Well, but he says to the Cubs. Logan yeah. says he's to the like, Cubs, "What's going to happen to when, you?" But when, Logan when you doesn't turn even fifty know. or sixty, what's going to? They're going to look at you. And want to get rid of you. Because uh, they don't explain it well. Why aren't they runners? No, they're not. If they're okay, not so agreeing is, to the system, oh, no, why is, aren't they considered runners? So the with runners... Am I making sense here? Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Well, you're illustrating why it's confusing. I, I'm, I'm confused as well. I, with, with runners, it's your last day. So at 30, you have your last day. You don't want to die. You got to run. These kids aren't even close to that. They're five, six, seven. They're just how the are they just, they're, they're they going to die? Is someone going to come they, grab they, them? They, they and will say come you have to go to the carousel yes. now. They're just no. they're just like a little they're, gang. They'll of... become runners at some point. Like if I was six, like let's say right now we're in the slums, five, six, seven, eight. We're just doing bad shit. One day our clock will go out, and then it will go ding ding somewhere, and they'll be like, "We got a runner." Because I would be thirty, but so you in the automatically society, pop as a runner, runner once you're th okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so as long as flower, they have. The... My question is why? But are you will these... never make it there as a cub because the cubs don't like old people. So like once you go, whatever the color system is in the movies, like I think red was the last red one. Red was the last one. Once you go red, the younger cubs are gonna kill you, and that's what he was talking about. Really, like when you go red, like your time's almost so, up. My time is technically up right now because I'm a runner, but you're gonna die worse than i am like they're coming so so crazy. they still adhere to the same system they but, just they're just little outside ragamuffins of outside yeah. of it to make it at their own but why and how because i mean the it, little girl like what happened to her after she was renewed or whatever as i don't know Jen jessica eight well she you was know, why why is she in that situation and not in the utopia uh, well it it's it could be there could be a couple of things one, for whatever reason, they are not perfect. So they're just kind of thrown into the ghetto. Okay. You know, or whatever. It's like I mean, they want to be there, I think. Well, they could, but but they but it's it's a But what agency does that little girl have to decide that? And, and at what point was she made did well, she make that choice? It just I seems mean, weird. Every single That's what's one confusing of about every it. single one of us at one point in time you don't remember ran away from like, home. Like going in a house. But I think we made a runner at that point. Even you, though I don't, not, I agree with with the fact that you're not a runner yet. But I'm trying. I'm struggling with the idea of how that that subset of society like has Hook, grown the, out um, of the, the, the kids with um <laughs> yeah with Rufio. Like they're just the kids out. They don't want to be. I get that. Walking around a in the mall. Here. There but, isn't a system. Right. There. But not, notice. But notice one thing though. In the in the mall area, like in the main area, how many kids did you see? None. 
Yeah, so, so those are like adult areas. Or is it or is it like Rumspringa where you you go and you hang out with the cubs until you realize that you'd rather live a better life for the rest of your I mean maybe, I don't know, but I mean like but the the kids are in the system, they just may not be the, it's one of those things where it's like they probably are still they are the teenagers in the world where you only live to 30 and they're a little rebellious. And there's some confusion too. Cause like he, he okay. did, the kid was like muscle, like said that and went to his face. So in the book, muscle is a drug that the cubs take. Like anyone could take it. It makes you stronger and stuff, but it works better when you're young. Like when you're older, closer to 21, 18, whatever and you take it, it like works your heart and you can just die. So like the little kids too, they're not just normal little kids. They're like, take muscle and like rip your face open so, so that's you, why you don't go in that area because the cubs control it and will murder you like gang warfare like with clubs and just beat you this is a classic example so, like, of, of poorly adapting yeah. source material so right it was, because it's like oh this is a thing that we got to make we got to get into the movie because it's in the book <laughs> Um, but well, but it, but it, we're going to confuse the movie I by think, doing it. <laughs> well, I yes. think the thing is, uh, here's the thing that I the, there is a purpose for the scene though, because one, he's this is when he starts winning trust from Jessica. Sure. So you know how he interacts with those kids, plus and the runner, how he lets runner. the runner go, and then. Um, I still think it kind of muddies the waters, but I get the importance of everything that happens in that scene as far as the plot driving is concerned. I just didn't understand who the fuck those kids were. <laughs> you mentioned and you why mentioned they were there earlier. Now I get a, a, a breakdown in ages like zero to seven, eight to fourteen, and I don't know, uh, fifteen to twenty-one. I guess right. Mm. Is, is there something significant to that in the book, like the, in those groupings, or just every seven years, your color changes? Oh, that's all it is. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, right. Logan starts the movie okay. off with a with a red. And right. Okay. It just isn't flashing yet. And then in the book, they they kind of built the there's more world building. So like, there like I said was nursery areas where you go and you're indoctrinated and whatever, and you're in a system with other kids. Then at some point you're still a kid. Um, like you go to. S- you're six, whatever. When your flower changes color, then you're placed in society. So, so you're still young because you're only, what, 14? And that's when you but, choose if you want to be a part of the system or if you're going to go to the ghetto or if you're going to do this. And do whatever really you want. really watching you. Yeah. Right. And then, okay. so that, that, think that makes, makes more sense. sense. Yeah. yeah. If they and gave us a little of that just in the movie, bit. I wouldn't yeah. have been confused. And I think totally. from 14, no, from like zero to six, you're in the nursery. From seven to 14, you're in society where you literally get anything you want foods free and stuff and i think once you hit the 14 marker like you're the now an adult and you do have to do some type of work part-time job or something to sustain yourself you're not a kid anymore where you get stuff for free you're an adult but life is so easy because it's utopian right. society okay fair, okay. fair. Hmm. all right hmm. so what's next what is hmm. next so yeah so okay. he gets to um so then he so he meets up with with Jessica and is like, hey, I'm I'm running. And he shows that he's flashing and she's like, OK, so she's going to take him to a place where he's going to be killed by other people that she is part of this group with um, because she doesn't fully trust him. But then that's when he proves himself by letting a runner leave and with those kids. And then he. um he kind of earns her trust and she ends up taking him someplace else. Get his face changed. They get his face changed because, and she admits it later, where I was originally going to take you, they were going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he, um, he goes and, and Farrah Fawcett's there as the nurse and she's like, dark hair. She wants, she dark really hair. just wants, she is wet for somebody with dark <laughs> hair. And he's like, all right, uh, dark hair, please. He's all just, over. All of them, just uh, <laughs> wolf man, maybe. Yeah, all of them. I got that. <laughs> um, so then he's so, um, but then it turns out that the the doctor is like not trusting the scenario, so he's gonna kill uh Logan. He gets called, somebody says, Oh, yeah, well, okay, I'll kill him. Yeah, yeah. and he's gonna use the little lasers and he's gonna kill him. Turns off the auto healing mode, right. 
and uh but then uh logan uh puts him on the table instead and the doctor gets sliced up so they take off and they run through the uh the sex place which is just a bar that everything moves in slow motion and everybody's butt naked and there's the purple <laughs> gas that whatever that drug is called is everywhere yeah they have some drugs butt naked that, and i want to know fucking. like that's why i want to do uh the movie remake because in the book they have like this <laughs> glass building area that you go to that's like for pleasure and all that stuff but the way it's written like it seems almost you know in um cabin in the woods when they're underground with those cubes Mm-hmm. It seems like that where like couples are in these glass boxes and lights like illuminating differently where you can't see those people next to you, but then it goes and shifts and you could like straight see the people next to you. And then like everyone's doing that moving and lights and you now they're going to have Ryan Gosling in there. So him and whoever the chick next to <laughs> would have been a good eye candy moment on screen. <laughs> I don't know. Cause in this one, it's just a, uh, it was like the dingy, what you see in like vampire movies, except everyone's just like naked. It's like, oh, we're well, it looked like hell. A little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was all smoky and like... Almost didn't look like a fun time, but you'd still catch me. Well, I mean, it's just like... <laughs> I don't the, know if the, the, the moment you walked in, it's like somebody's like all over you. I'm like, mm, mm. I haven't had enough of these drugs yet. Yeah, yeah. it's like, give me a moment. <laughs> I'm still close. Bit rapey. Yeah. <laughs> Bit rapey. <laughs> Allow me to consent. Walking in through the door does not... It's just like with the circuit. Just because she was in the circuit doesn't mean she wants to fuck. Right. Anyway. So... um yeah, so they escape through the back of that place, and they end up getting to where um, the other underground people are, the people who will eventually run, and they're all going to, um, they don't expect to see a guy dressed as a, um, as Sandman. a Sandman. Yep. I almost said Scarecrow. <laughs> they also give... Uh, reason to the name for uh sandman because you go into deep sleep huh because you go to sleep deep sleep and also through training they incorporated with the deep sleep you're the same man you're killing them and then also the training was like a hundred miles of some desert where you have mm. no food or water and you have to like get across it because in your head it's like runners run but they'll get tired like i always got to be on the attack i gotta mm. be the one to kill them it's like my and, buddy oh, who's a marine God, said we walked five miles every day to get gassed and five miles back, like he just yeah. chose, uphill. He chose that to do both ways. In the snow. Marine, he was a marine, and he said they had to do that. They oh, had, okay. Did he choose to, to be a marine? He did. <laughs> I thought you were saying like he was just at home. He's like, oh, I gotta go get gas, and chose no, no, himself. get gassed, get oh. gassed. Oh, I was like, oh, I thought you meant hiked miles. I, I did five too. Miles like I gotta, I gotta fill up my wrong. gas can. <laughs> Like, dude, yeah. you stop before you go home. I said gas. Yeah. Gas. It'll be on the tape. I said it. <laughs> we, we are recording this on a tape. Yeah, a magnetic, magnetic and tape. everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so the, um, yeah, so uh, they, they're they going to kill them. And then, of course, it doesn't help. The Farrah Fawcett comes in. It's like, yeah, he's the guy who got the doctor killed. Bad communication, too. Like, she's not even trying to not get her friend dead. She like she's just a shrine like that's them. It's like you don't really well, remember. She's just, she's, she's, yeah, it's it's a little bit revenge, it's a little bit saving herself, you know, and then it's uh yeah, so then there but then like Jessica's like no Holly, I think it was her name was Holly. Uh, her like, name was Prop- Adelaide Tom Fawcett. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> no, doing it again. Like, he's not he's too busy doing uh. whatever. <laughs> anyway, so uh so they're like <laughs> but then like jessica's like no it was the other guy it wasn't yeah. this guy it shows you how guy. easily these people are coerced yeah. too like all right. of them are are coerced and brainwashed all the time right yeah, she and, was confused and then jessica's like it was blah 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 remember and she's like yeah and then all the people are like we'll take that yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like all right we'll turn turn down. <laughs> Everyone's shaking and, and then a fucking tank comes through the door <laughs> And then, I thought it was an explosion, but yeah. It well, a- <laughs> sure, whatever. A tank, an explosion, an explosive tank, whatever. It, it's one of those things that happens. And then they kill all those... All those people die. Who should have been running already. That's stupid to me. Like, what the they hell? They should have already had their escape plan, because that was eventually in- going to happen. Yeah, why not just go They're now? living in the shadows. Not being why trapped. the fuck didn't they just leave? Right. No, if you know the way out. out. Yeah. Yeah, so... They- why wait? So they escape into the uh, sewage plant, which is the runoff of all the sex place juices, I'm assuming, because everything was green and gross. Giant tadpoles. Giant sperms. <laughs> yeah. Swimming around. Giant semen. <laughs> semen. 
The, yeah. They're in the Navy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, so they had, uh, so they, they are being followed by Francis and, um, who's fucking psychotic. He is, he, he is not going to let these runners get away. No, nope. it's funny. Gonna... He, he just hates Logan right now because the girl's not even a runner. Like in the no. book, she is a runner, but in this, it's like, she's just now on the run with Logan, who is a runner. And he's just like, I got to get you. I got to, uh, uh, you won't run. Like, damn dude, just, I don't know. Chill, kill him. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like you would leave before you become a runner. So nobody's fucking chasing you. Like why? That's so stupid. Sorry. That well, fair enough. I ruins mean, the narrative. I would run way, on but... my 29th birthday, yeah, but I wouldn't get very do... far because I can't run very far. They might not even. Well, he knows how old, he knows he has four years, but I think they're, you know, like as I'm getting older, I kind of forget my birthday. So I'm thinking if I was in a system that's just color coded, I would know once it changed color. I'm now that age, so people probably aren't even paying attention or caring. And then last day comes on them, and it's just blinking. And then they're probably like, "Dude, I thought I had it this week. I thought I had a year. I thought I'm only 19." That's fair, I'm actually but I would have left and... before that. You left to where? I mean, if I wanted to leave, leave I would have left. Four times. Right. Then. I totally agree. I, but where I, do you and, leave? And, and well, you go to sanctuary. I mean, but only select people are getting information up. It's not like everyone in the everybody. Dome knows no, no. About listen, all those people knew about sanctuary. People go to sanctuary knows about sanctuary. So why didn't they just leave? But if they. They know of Sam, but we found out Sanctuary's not real. They that doesn't matter. They don't that know that. Matter. They think it is. They think it is. So, so they would just have ran and been in that situation and not have left a, a, a system to help people get free. Maybe you're they leaving were, a they're system trying to behind. Be, they're trying but... to be the heroes. Like Harriet Tubman and just get to the north and say, I'm not going to go back. She made a system to go I back get, and I help get that all some of them. People can stay she, if everyone trail, just left but... and went to the north, it's like, better luck if y'all can't do it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. I'll give, I'll give you that. That makes sense. Um, I I don't. It seems like a lot of people, though. That's what I'm saying. It's too many. That was like ten I, out of a city. There was like sixty people in that's that. True. Still that's true. Two hundred thousand. That's the other thing. They they talk about <laughs> thousands and thousands of people in the city, but you never get a real sense of scale. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Maybe I'm yeah. thinking. I said that earlier. Yeah. That maybe I'm thinking this place is smaller than it yeah. actually is. No, you thought that because when I first watched it too, I was the same. It's like it's just a mall. It's like a hundred. <laughs> it's just a population a of a hundred. Yeah, like, half of these people be. are rebelling. Like, why don't they just kill everybody? Yeah. <laughs> but or so, just change. That, that, that's yeah. a good point. That's a really good point. I, I buy that. Um, so yeah, so they get, uh, they eventually get into, uh, this really, really cold place and they see like these little sculptures of like penguins and walruses and birds and stuff like that. And they're like, huh, well, we're wet. Maybe we should just take off our clothes to which we all said, yes. And we're like, yes. <laughs> PG boobies. Get PG some of boobies. that Jenny a gutter butter. Yeah. <laughs> that Jenny a butter. Yep. <laughs> so then they, uh, so that's, this is where we meet Box. Box is a, is a robot man. And my favorite kind of robot man, he's literally a box <laughs> with a head and some, and some coil arms. And some, and some treads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a little he looks like Austin Powers treads. when he's standing on Mini Me and Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> so then, he, uh, and he explains that his whole purpose, the reason why he was created, was to store uh, fish protein. and plankton and, yeah. and, pro and protein from the sea, which we saw a little bit of that swimming around in the, in the sewage plant. And then he said, well, then. That stopped coming, but they kept coming, or something else kept coming, so I stored them. And that's when we find out that all the people that are missing, or a lot of the people that are missing, are frozen by box to be eaten by the people in the city. Yeah. 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 So, uh, they're like, ooh, ooh, this is not a good place. So, uh, so, so Logan just smashes that box. Yeah, he smashes that box. And then they leave and they get out into the sun and they realize, hey, we're outside. To which shortly after getting outside, uh, Jessica says, I hate outside. And I'm like, same, same. <laughs> She's a <laughs> salamander trying to climb up her butthole. So, Well, same. I've had that happen, too. Yeah. Boxes where in the <laughs> book it starts to be different on the more extreme well, side. Well, you said that there were mech eagles, so yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for I mean, that. Th this is where the movie also starts to get a little sleepy. 
No, that's that's probably what I was. It does for me too, and I think that's the thing is like this is literally them trying to. They felt like they've been making this movie already long enough. There's too much content with this book to follow, so we got to kind of wrap it up, but don't really aren't using that source. And I think that's the thing that happens because literally, box and the book they are. I think you know I said they get the key, get a contact, go, and they're supposed to go to a contact. Somehow they get on a hell car where people just get sent to this Arctic region of the planet. Like you just go and you will die. They meet some people from the ice who are like, hey, man, uh, the rules are you're the new people. You can pick any one of us to fight. Uh, if you kill us, you get our shit and you stay. If you die, like we're going to eat you. And that's about it. So whatever. And then <clears throat> then he's like, he does that. He's with Jess. And then he's like, why don't we get out of here? Like, we could find food. And it's like, bro, there's ice everywhere. I'm No, you want to do that? You can. There's a guy out there named Box. You can find him. He's not really a him, though. It's a what. And it's some dude who, I guess, went against the system in some way, got destroyed probably by one of those tables, and then put back together Darth Vader style and thrown out in a hell car. But luckily for him, he doesn't get cold. He doesn't really have to eat or anything. So he's the one who does ice sculptures. He has a hand and that's oh, all okay. he spends his time on day in, day out. They finally come to him and they're like, hey, can you help us get food? He's like, I don't want food. I'm about art. It's like, but I can help you get out of here if you two get naked and I could sculpt you. And they're like, what? And then there's like little they did film that scene, but they had to be cut for the nudity. Dang. passion and like he's holding them <laughs> or he's sculpting it's gotta them. be somewhere you can find it well i don't know if they filmed it, i should say it was in the script but the they, script. Had to, they had to cut it um, and then he sculpts that them. sounds bonkers yeah and then no no he <laughs> sculpts them and then it. then you find out he's like i'm also a master of torture and wants to kill them so he gets jess puts her like on a table where an ice block is gonna fall and just squish her and logan's like chained up in a like he's in a cage bar sees like a fish kind of in the like punches it frees himself and then gets jess off the table in the nick of time and then they like leave um in a heaven car no they leave well they do get to because those are maze cars but <laughs> not the, box told them the way out because they did their the pose for him so he did oh. tell him and it seems weird like it's like um a force filled labyrinth like they were on the ice and had to take steps or whatever and then like came out onto a platform and were like yay we're out of there so box wasn't really like the next step to sanctuary he, he was kind of like a misstep yeah that's interesting Something i like what they do with box in the movie better because yes. that just sounds insane what you just described from the book. Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, it's when they like go past something and there's like literally mech eagles that come down and like try to kill them. The main spoiler you find out though is that there's an old man named Ballard who's like this guy sending the information, giving people keys. He's the like main contact underground guy. And then they're being chased by francis and then he does get to washington dc animals were there there's like a tiger that he has to battle and almost dies from it pursues on you find out that ballard the hero is francis they're one in the same like he's at the end like francis chases him he's like um because he still wants to kill logan if he hasn't learned like why do you why are you on the run like you were on the run and be this hero thing and like earlier when he met him when when he was ballard he um logan didn't kill either one like he kind of got conflicted but he was still like but ballard was going to kill logan because he's like that's not enough just because he didn't pull the trigger he might still not be good enough but at the end logan's like we gotta run like you don't have to die at 21 it's not fair like old things old people like wisdom all the stuff we have is because of old people like we should be able to live and i don't want to die it's not fair like ah and he's like hmm it's like you learned and sanctuary is real it's like a space station on the other side of mars and you're gonna get in this rocket and we're gonna send you there. that is insane Jesus. fucking crazy that is insane so that's not what happens <laughs> i honestly want to see that movie though that is crazy <laughs> yeah, I read the book, I was like, if they do a remake i need it to follow this that more is bonkers. it can now it can now far yeah. cheap more even cheap, while yeah. Yeah, you can't make that movie in 1976 for nine million dollars no <laughs> like there's the other like they were one part in hiding um they're on some platform that's doing a battle reenactment of the Civil War, like Fredericksburg or whatever. And, like, he, him and uh, Jess put on, like, two androids' clothes and are trying to walk across the battlefield to the other side. I still assume it's big. But they're, like, realistic. So it's just, like, they, they're trying to get 
on the other side, it would just be a weird scene because there's a bunch of tourists who are like, wow, this is crazy, like watching it. And you're two humans, but there's like points where cannonballs are supposed to make contact. Like they'll go fly on the ground and that's where they're going to hit and bullets. So like you're still really could die right now while you're trying to escape. And there's like the DS men out there. I'm like, damn, that'd be, that'd be lit. Huh. But, huh. All right. Once. Well, in this, what happens is uh, they walk to Washington, <laughs> D.C., and they meet a crazy old man. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who's my favorite part of this movie? Yeah. He's, so that's Peter he's insane in his own right. Yep. Yeah. And he is somebody who has uh, been born, always lived outside, has no idea what this city is. And he lives, uh, he's lived in several of the, of the homes in Washington because he talks about that. And he lives with like several dozen cats and i just was sitting there thinking it's like oh i i think my 70s are gonna be probably okay yeah you're gonna have you're gonna own washington dc you're gonna have lots of great gonna have great seats to watch the football team games yeah that's for sure yeah um but yeah so they uh um, he quotes a bunch of t.s Eliot. yes the uh not just any t.s Eliot. uh the uh was the old possum's uh guide to cats or whatever it's it's the thing the cats is based on <laughs> not the animal <laughs> not the, the movie the, the, <laughs> the, 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 play. the stage play yeah yeah because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's like he's like listening he's talking he's like talking in that and i'm like ah, ah i'm getting 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 a little getting a little flashback it's, it's here. like when you have acid flashback yeah. you got a little little bit of that fever dream ah. feeling yep. ah, yeah he was Where's weird but he was good <laughs> i liked him yeah he's end. and he opens up stuff like that we were talking about earlier with the confusion of like how long has he been there he had who parents were they yeah possibly runners who made a pass box right or have you been outside is there other humans like you've literally like the last 20 years just been by yourself in the library of congress or wherever buildings and yeah not seen any other humans like are they out here or are you were you about to be the last one and just by chance it seems like he was generation of youth the, comes out and he was the last one in washington it seems um because like he he wasn't expecting to see anybody but he describes the idea of marriage basically to right to logan and I, I, it's jenny gutter i'm just gonna say jessica that. jessica and she's like doesn't that sound nice let's just stay out here and live the rest of our lives together and logan's like nope <laughs> <laughs> nope no man no not getting married i'd rather go risk my life <laughs> it, well, I think actually, this is when logan actually runs yeah <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like the line should have been it's like, hey, I'm gonna go get a gallon of milk. Yeah. I'll be I'm back in a little go, bit. I'm gonna go check out Vancouver. I'll be back. <laughs> and then but, you hear like squealing tires off in the distance. Like, hey. But they decide the old man is like, Well, you promised to stay here and bury me when I die, and they're like, Well, come with us, we'll show you to the young people. They'll have to believe us. So they go back and they walk like, all the way back with old man in tow. Yeah, they do an underwater mission. Oh, by the they they do kill francis at, at the at, hey, f- at fuck francis at the, at the <laughs> congress the they do francis shows up and then francis drops francis his... grabs jessica by the face yeah to... he muscles her he probably had muscles and then right? michael york kills him with jerry goldsmith musical cues yes and yep. then they go on a basil exposition <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't mentioned that yet I didn't know. yeah michael york is basil exposition yeah <laughs> 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 and um, they, they go on the underwater the little tunnel to go get the people and they're yelling at everyone everyone's like fucking they're like who are these people? lunatics like, we're going to your, carousel <laughs> yeah we just want to go they to society them. yeah that everything's following everyone's orderly for the most part you guys come out you didn't even change clothes you're all bloody looking weird and just like you gotta yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> You can't go to carousel. They're like the the do doom, they're like the doomsayer, you know, yes. on, on the side of the the road with the yeah. bell. You Ralph, know? they're Ralph in <laughs> yeah. Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> totally. It's like okay, old man. Yeah, okay, okay boomer. we're all doomed. This is why we kill people at thirty. <laughs> in case he's probably a runner. Yeah. You know. So yeah, so they capture him. And, and they take him to the computer and and they're like que- it gets questioned and he's like there is no sanctuary and they're like nope that doesn't sound like an answer that i expected to hear because again only to uh, the computer yeah because like at, at because uh even logan tries to explain to jessica that there is no such thing as sanctuary there was only an idea there was only the hope that there was something 
it's all heaven and earth kind of it's exactly yeah and um because it is kind of like they left the garden of eden yes 100 percent. yeah so i don't have time to talk about all that stuff no no fuck that <laughs> um i don't know that stuff very well they're, they're in the nude and then they get tempted by this robot and they've been they in, go yeah. and in the jungle and they see the old wise man who's not wise <laughs> but is he who knows he's probably spent some magic right well there. he knows t.s Eliot. i mean that's more than i know yeah so anyway so then they um basically they keep saying um you know he keeps getting asked like what did you see out there with the computer ex- buying in to the whole belief system that that sanctuary is real and when he keeps saying that he saw an old man and that then that there is no sanctuary and cats. And, and cats. <laughs> cats and then the computer explodes that's all it took to, to build to short it's that like, fucker out yeah it's like just <laughs> it, it destroyed its belief system. It, di- it didn't just destoy the computer it was a virus it destroyed the whole damn it's a, thing it's a virus it was very it's very metaphorical yes yeah. yeah yeah and so uh yeah so he uh the whole place blows up some of those people are dead because oh, yeah, we saw sure. one guy on fire it doesn't That's matter bad. a lot of them were gonna die anyway if fair they didn't enough get out well maybe maybe that guy was like i was gonna go to carousel tomorrow <laughs> and he's on fire now so it's like hey better better now than tomorrow <laughs> except <laughs> womp womp it's uh everything is free now but yeah. anyway people come out they see <laughs> peter Houston off and they're like ew, ew and then they all go back face. inside and the movie ends <laughs> 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 no they they come out and they all like start touching him which rude he, which he without likes. his he, he did it. like he liked it. especially that cute bond that was yeah she was cute. Yeah. she looks like uh what's her name there was two lookalikes in this there was a courtney cox character the one oh, oh, yeah, she got the one runner up. yeah and she's um sookie from uh oh um true blood what is her name she um, also played rogue in the x-men um, um, oh, why can't i remember her Carolyn. name oh yeah uh, anna paquin anna paquin. she looked like anna paquin yeah a lot like Anna Paquin. I was like, that can't be Anna Paquin, but it looks like Anna Paquin. Unless For some reason, when you said mm, Snooky, maybe. I wasn't thinking of a character from this True Blood show, and I just thought I like... I said you, Sookie, not Snooky. <laughs> no, but that's what... In my mind, I was like, oh, that's what I heard. I'm like, you were going Snooki. to the Jersey Shores yeah. or something? Uh, I didn't see anybody in there that... What are you, and you watched Jersey Shores? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, what? A, few, a, few things, a few things real quick about Michael Anderson, the director. You know this guy, Jeff. Yeah, I do. You know him from... Uh, doctor who probably a few different things but he um he he made the original i think it must have been the original movie version of 1984 nice yes in the year 1956 which interesting so he's got this sensibility right it's a little orwellian in here Uh uh-huh for sure um he's also made um your doc savage the man yes i know yep because that was also produced by george powell Mm -hmm. uh he made orca yeah which is Ooh, kind of the, the Jaws movie. knockoff. Oh, okay. it's, it's not a bad movie, yeah. Um, he made Dominique, which um, I believe has a Vinegar Syndrome release. It does. It also has Jenny Gutter in it. Oh, I'm going to buy that. And Ooh, then um, that. and then probably the favorite thing that he's made that I've seen is Millennium, 1989. Oh, Ascension yeah. Millennium, the Corey Feldman video? Yes, yes. One in the same. <laughs> One in the same. <laughs> which has also got some boxy-looking robots in it. Nice. Um but he also made the worst best picture winner of all time around the world in 80 days is Jackie that really Dan? the worst it's up there because a lot of people say it's crash even though i don't believe oh that crash either. isn't very good um but it's in the conversation around the world really? in 80 days is not very good crash didn't age well though people liked it when it came out and then uh, after a few years they're like wait a minute this movie's shit I mean, Cra- crash like crash that. was very manipulative and that's that's why i think it 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 because it kind of suckered me too. It gets with some big real ideas, poorly. and yeah. then when you really start to kind of like the second time I watched it, I was like, "Oh my god, this is actually kind of racist." Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But anyhow, that's Jeff's that's, that's the director over here. Nah. He's mad at T. S. Eliot, so he's beating <laughs> up his cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jeff just does the, not hurt his cats. I was joking. No, I was just getting them away from. Me. Any any other uh, arms. any other things? I, man, um, I, I like the deep research on this, Travis. That was that was good stuff. Yeah, it turned out that uh, the book is bonkers. Yeah, the book was. It blew my mind. I'm saying, don't, I don't that's take a- the <laughs> drugs while you read them. <laughs> while it was probably a financial choice, it was also a wise choice not to go this route. The oh, route yeah. of the and book. they couldn't because they were in too many locations. Like they went to North Dakota. Like I said, the following because Ballard 
being Francis, trying to help like Jess, but Logan he couldn't trust, so he tried to. Oh, did anyone watch the TV show? Did it maybe go more along the lines of the book? I doubt that. No. Uh, my guess is it was probably just doing more of the movie. It was a run of the week. Probably. <laughs> probably. Because, uh, or at least it would be like Logan going to different places, running away from people. Um, like Kane from Kung Fu? I guess. Is that what he does in that? <laughs> well, he travels from place to place. Yes, he does. Just walks the earth. Yeah, Kane walks the earth. I also fight some <laughs> gypsy people. Who, uh, oh, it sucked. I felt bad for Logan. So they go outside, they meet some gypsies, and they got like all their jewelry and all this stuff. And they're like, we're gonna. They gave Jessica some poison that she was gonna die from. And then Logan's like, no, you can't do that. How do like, how do I get the antidote? And then like the seven female gypsies looked at him, and then the guy just took Jess, and it's like, oh, that's what I gotta do. And he was like, the first time was awesome. The second wasn't that great. The third was a little painful. The fourth was agonizing. The fifth, so he like seven chicks back to back. He's like, no, and what's happening to Jess? And then she just didn't do anything, so the guy got pissed. And then a battle ensued, and they're all like these, I don't know, like hover bikes going fast, flying around, and then like go up a cliff, and then he comes back around and aims it at the dude and like jumps off and goes in some rapids. And I'm going to have to read this fucking <laughs> it sounds It sounds book. pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah, the the TV show sounds like it, it maybe is a little bit more in line with um, a, more, a continuation of the movie taking them more places across America, across the U.S., but um, so a little bit closer to the book, but not the book at all. Because it's because it's him and Jessica it's like the in there, book, but not at all. And and it doesn't sound like you know it doesn't sound like well, they set him up as a as he wants to be the hero. It's more of the he's trying to find sanctuary for real and the thinker is a failing system now because you find out in rushmore mount rushmore actually he's called crazy horse like a giant indigenous figure maybe that was planned and that's why he wrote about it but anyway thinker the computer system that began this age was put inside like the base and i think when he was in there he found out that this areas they were going like molly was one which was acronym for something cathedral were all these dead places so he assumed oh the next dead place is dc and that's how he ends up going to dc where he does the francis ballard battle and finds out that's not the last location because last location is off the planet that did blow my mind because i was like there's like ah sanctuary's not weird but they kept going and it's like you gotta it's like it's what space hmm hmm how'd you get there that's where jeff bezos is going he's going to sanctuary yep. we're going to sanctuary yeah thanks for Helping us out, getting there too, fucker. It's prime and there's a giant. I think the moment. <laughs> Maybe he'll stay there. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll. Send but how am I going to get my packages? <laughs> I need to get my packages. I want to get my movies. <laughs> Sometimes I wish they would stick with lower ages. I know, we're like thirty, they probably did for a lot of reasons. I think that's what's like. I don't know. I know I'm looking at from my side, but age doesn't. I, mean, I wouldn't have watched a movie or not because it's a younger crowd. Like The Giver, they tried to do the opposite where they pushed them in the teenage years. I'm like, the, the craziness is the fact that this is a 12 year old dealing with it, not a 16, 18, almost adult. The fact that a 12 year old kid is giving all of human memory, like all pain, all happiness, whatever, and has to deal with that. And it's the only person who knows what lies are and can't trust his parents and finds out, like, Dude, that sucks, but yeah, sixteen year olds like oh, you can handle it. Suck it up, Buttercup. But like twelve, even twelve, that pressure would suck. <laughs> and then all the other kids, like that would you know, it's you got to youth is so pure, and then you see all these other children, like you guys are, you're fucked. Like yeah. how do you get out of this? This system is lame. They didn't even know what like animals were. Like the sister, had, like. The hippopotamus, like stuff. What are animal. we talking about now? I'm the sorry. Giver. I just went the there. giver. Okay. <laughs> I got lost there. Future I didn't movies are always weird because they. I mean, it just takes some aspect that I could see, like for real, us going there in right. some way. And maybe we're already there in ways that I just haven't paid attention to. But like the giver was probably the first book I read that just made me interested in all of those movies. Sweet. Well. I think we have done it. We did it. We did it. I like this movie quite a bit. It's a fun watch. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good to talk about. Yeah. It was a and, good and conversation. Uh, about there, there are concepts. That, uh, again, it's a pleasant movie t- to watch with deeper concept. Yeah. 
you know, it's not, you don't often get that a lot of the time. So I like it better having talked about it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Fair. I liked it probably better watching, reading some wikis probably afterwards. Like, what's going on? And really kind of ish. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's just cheesy. Fun. So. Pew, pew. Next week. The Boibs. Boibs. The Boibs. Uh, the, the, the 1989, right? 1989 mm-hmm. Tom Hanks classic. So, yeah. Yep. Yep, indeed. The so, babes. The burbs. The burbs. Oh. The boobs. The, the boibs. <laughs> the boys. <laughs> I thought he said babes. Come on, it's the boibs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so check back in for that. Uh, you can find all of our episodes, filmseizure.com. You can also find us at uh, places like SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify. Uh, I feel like I'm missing one in Stitcher and Audible. Yeah. And then uh, we also upload our stuff to YouTube. So you can check stuff out there, but then also um, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. That way you can be notified or see, hey, they got new shit out. I want to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Or listen to it. Yeah. Actually, more accurately, listen to it. Yeah. Um, Also, in all of those same places on Mondays, I do Monster Mondays. This upcoming Monday is Magic. The Gathering. Sweet. No, I'm just it's a uh, nice little uh, killer uh, Anthony Hopkins, Anthony Hopkins uh, dummy movie. Or is it a killer dummy? But also this upcoming Friday, we have a film seizure special, Freddy vs. Jason. It's good times. Jesus. We're getting pretty close to the end. Yes, and it's are. starting to feel, you can start feeling it <laughs> in that conversation. <laughs> um, but also on Fridays, every Friday bmovieanima.com that's my website read a new article this upcoming week is 1996's vampirella talk about batshit movie roger daltrey goes for it in that (laughs) and it's fun um but also very bad um so anyway do those things it's uh it's good it's good for you probably um thank you travis for joining us for a couple of weeks travis Good stuff, Travis. No problem. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you having me. You. <laughs> <laughs> this is Radio Voice. <laughs> this is Radio Travis. Radio Travis. <laughs> this is Ground Control to Radio Travis. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> they just say All right. So <laughs> until next time, I have been Jeff Arbuckle. I've been Chuck Moore. I've been Travis, and I took Jason's spot, and I also said his name for him. And you've been listening to Film Seizure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <I didn't> <laughs>